Okay. Um, I suggest that Lamia, we go with, uh, let's say, your um, uh, your speech, and uh, we are waiting that Fred is connecting. And once you finish, he's going to um, to uh, give his views and uh, I would say his uh, experiences to share with us the experiences. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Okay. So, uh, Lamia, I'm going to shortly present you. So, um, sorry for this technical issue we have with, uh, with Shanghai. Uh, so, the Lamia is the Secretary General of Fairport, as I said earlier, uh, professional experience of more than 90 years, during uh, um, which she held different positions with the maritime logistics sector. Um, among others, she has been for uh, seven years the public affairs manager of the French ship owner organization. And between 2009 and 2012, uh, she has also been appointed a senior expert and advisor in the framework of several European projects financed by the different uh, the directorates of the European Commission. So, um, Lamia is going to give some expectations of your private ports and terminals in the modern supply chain. So, please, Lamia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tonel, and good morning, everybody. Um, I think that um, I, I have prepared the presentation, but maybe if we are on a, on a speech format, I will do like everybody and then share maybe my thoughts. Uh, first thing I would like to, to say um, is that we are quite uh, proud that in spite of all what has happened uh, in, in, in Europe and particularly in some countries like Spain and Italy, uh, ports have never stopped working. Uh, and this is something that is really valuable in, in times of emergency and, and the importance of uh, supplying all kinds of equipment uh, to hospitals and supermarkets. So the first thing I would like to say is that thanks to uh, the commitment and involvement and, and dedication of the different uh, parties of the supply chain, uh, the, the supply chain have been actually very resilient in, in this COVID crisis. And this is something that is really important. Um, ports and terminals in Europe have never stopped working. Uh, and I must say that uh, be it on the employees or the employer side, uh, the involvement has been uh, completely, I would say, um, uh, total uh, at all time to make sure that uh, actually sh the ships calling at European ports are discharged and that the, 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 the goods reach the final uh, destination. Uh, once we have said that, of course, this is a big crisis. So be, be beyond, I would say, the epidemic itself, which has um, required from uh, my members, uh, of course, the, the setting up uh, some emergency plans and, and of course, some contingency uh, measures to, uh, to, to um, protect the workers uh, who are, of course, in, on the front line. Uh, the, it, it has been a lot of, I would say, uh, organizations within the, the, the companies themselves uh, to make sure that there were enough shifts, uh, that the shift, the, the disinfection and all, all the, I would say, the necessary measures were actually uh, taken. Uh, this, beyond that, of course, we, we expect the big storm uh, to, to take place in the coming weeks. Because, of course, and what I mean by the big storm is indeed the uh, consequence of the uh, slowing down, or I would say even the stop of, of uh, manufacturing uh, plants and, uh, and, of course, uh, all the exports, the European exports, to hit also uh, somehow the, uh, the, the port sector. Uh, because, of course, we, 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 until, I would say, February, March, we still had some activity in ports and although there were there was a serious drop in in the volumes it was still some the, the ports were still active uh, but now we of course uh, expect the month of may and the coming ones to be a rather difficult one and we expect a rather important drop in volumes and this is something that is the result of course of all it's the cascading i would say effect of the, the, the slowing down of all the activities in the interland within the industrial clusters in, in the EU. So um, this is the, the status today. Uh, we, it's too early, of course, to predict anything, but what we obviously um, are already brainstorming about is 
what kind of world tomorrow we shall have. Is it something that will be the replication of what we knew already in the past, that is a globalization model uh, with the if, uh, flows of trade as we know them today? Or are we heading for something which is a bit different? Because of course, there's a, there are a lot of political discussions at this moment within the EU regarding the issue of the uh, independence and autonomy on the supplies of some critical strategic products. And therefore, we uh, are, as an organization, of course, we are a political organization uh, within, within uh, the uh, maritime cluster. We are, of course, taking part of the discussion on uh, whether we are going to see some regionalization of the flows, uh, because, of course, as a consequence of some relocation of some uh, plants producing some types of products. We are not, of course, it's too early to predict anything because this is something that will be an effect instead of something that we will push ourselves. Uh, but we are part of the segment and we will have to adapt. The second thing I would like to, to mention is, of course, if we are heading for something which is slightly different from the model of globalization as we knew, and probably also the massifications of flows as we knew them, in, in the past, this will have also uh, an effect and question, of course, the uh, use uh, of, of the, the big ships as we knew them these last years. Uh, that is whether we, we, we first, what we see is that orders of vessels have been frozen and postponed for many carriers, uh, which is already a, a sign, uh, of course, that things are, um, that, that there will be some uh, economic downturn. And we also see that uh, 3 million TU capacity has been withdrawn from the market. So there's a lot of idling of already capacities. And, and we see it at the port level with the number of blank sailings, which have jumped at numbers which are really, I would say, quite significant for us. So um, this means that the, on the carrier side, there will be a questioning of, of the strategies too. If, of course, the, the trend of uh, relocation is something that becomes really, I would say, uh, serious in the coming months. And of course, whether we will need the same types of ships, this is something that will probably be a discussion, a discussion within uh, the shipping sector with effects, of course, on, on ports, because um, then it would mean that we would have probably a more diversified um, also uh, offer on the side of ports. It won't be only, uh, I would say, uh, the, a discussion between the, between big ports, but maybe secondary or what we call more the feeder ports would have a card to play. So it's, it's a reshuffling of, of the, the, I would say, the landscape, which might happen. I'm, I'm using the which uh, might as, as I insist on that, because we, it's still very difficult. I think we need more than a crystal ball to predict what, what, will, what will happen. But um, for the moment, this is, this is what uh, we, we see on, I would say, we, we feel, uh, it's, it's more an intuition that, that, uh, than a certainty, of course. And maybe a third and last point regarding what the EU is brainstorming about and the initiative that we're taking. Um, of course, as, as part of the industry, we have been requesting that border checks, which have been a problem at some point, creating congestion for ports, uh, are uh, actually implemented in member states. Uh, what we mean by green lanes is that is those uh, checks, border checks, uh, which take 15 minutes instead of longer periods of time, because of course it was very important to release the, the road hauliers and the trucks uh, quite soon at the borders. It, this was an, in, an important initiative from the European Commission that we supported. And there are uh, three other measures that I would like to, uh, to mention. As I said, there, is a, there was also um, uh, some proposals uh, for the repatriation of crews, which is very important to keep the supply chain resilient because we needed to change the crews on board of ships to continue, of course, the delivery of, of goods. And there is, of course, a, st a state aid temporary framework, which has been proposed to member states. Member state. One is about the recapitalization, uh, because, of course, there is a lot of debt uh, and growing uh, debt within 
uh, be it on uh, for, for many, I would say, in the shipping sector. And this is going to be, uh, I would say, an important uh, topic in the coming months, but not only in shipping, it's also along the supply chain. There are many, many, many corporations which are facing very difficult uh, situation. And the last initiative is, of course, regarding FDI, since the European Union is seriously now uh, considering and a number of countries have taken measures on that to limit the possibility to have um, some shares uh, being bought by uh, third countries or strategic uh, companies. So this is what I wanted to mention to start with um, as, a, as a, to start the discussion. Okay, so thank you very much, Lamia, for uh, your uh, presentation. Um, hello, Fred, I can see you that you are back. So um, uh, I'm going to give you the word. So can you hear us, Fred? I think you need to unmute. Can you hear us? Hello, Fred, can you, I can see you. Can you, can you do you hear me? Hello? Yes, Fred, no, very well. Very well, so uh, good afternoon. I was just introducing you um, a couple of minutes before. I'm very glad that the technical uh, link is now uh, back. So um, your uh, experiences and views as a Chinese uh, large uh, port equipment manufacturer in the modern supply chain. So uh, Fred, please uh, go ahead. The floor is okay. yours. Otto, can you hear me? Yes, there is, a, there is a back noise, but go ahead. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank you and also give me the chance uh, to join this meeting and uh, I appreciate Pima. Uh, I will share some experience uh, during this special period with, my, with you and I hope member uh, of Pima and our partner and oil family safe and everything goes well. In the first quarter of 2020, the unexpected coronavirus has had a great impact on the economic and the social development, including China. As you know, uh, I have three months, almost three months, not go abroad, but uh, we already start uh, domestic traveling from last month. As all the countries have been now adopting strict strategy of prevention and control, I believe they and we can control the virus very soon. As you have known, the Chinese government has developed, adopted a series of strong measures to against virus such as lockdown the city, Wuhan. For the first time, the Chinese government urgently coordinate the national medical supplies, including thousands of doctors, medical teams to support Wuhan, and the sharing the knowledge of the personal protection with the public, and the make adjustment on the way back to work and the production. And also, I think we get a lot of support from many, many countries worldwide. So the efforts already successfully contain the spread of the virus in two months. Up to now, the existing confirmed case in Wuhan and China almost very, very low. So at the end of March, most of the enterprise and company in China restart their production and employees were back to work, uh, not including the theater or some uh, cinema and some restaurants still closed, but most of, of them open. And some hotel, is closed, but most, most of the hotel now, they start work. The PMC, our company also, back to normal work. Our 35,000 employees and the workers already back to work and work very hard. 
So meanwhile, we are making good personal protection against the virus. As a crane manufacturer, international enterprise, we also restarted production step by step in the middle of the February. At the stage of the outbreak, the personnel are first guarantee on the some key project. Uh, you know, we have a Chinese New Year in February, uh, in the late January, this year's late January. But we keep almost 500 people stay in our Changing Island manufacturing base. So these people are very safe and very clean. They keep working on many important projects. So we keep working in the Spring Festival on our Hamburg project, our mm, mm, RWG Rotterdam project, and some other Middle East project. They're going well. And uh, some people, uh, most people, they go back home, uh, different city. But we think we, 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 we after, after uh, the outbreak of the virus, we contact with them, make sure they get no fever and the trade their track. And we use our bus. We use our bus. We, every time we will send 50 big bus to their hometown bring them back. Usually the bus can take 50 people each bus, but we use 20, we, 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 we let them stay. Mm, uh, we, we, every bus, we pick up 20 people and make sure uh, during the traveling, they take the mask and also we trace their two weeks uh, activity, make sure it's no problem. So we bring all the people, uh, almost uh, 30,000 people back from different city in China by our bus and bring them back to our manufacturing base. And every people, every people, we put them in the separate dorm or sometimes their family, three person in, 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 in the room, Sometimes there are no each other, two people in the room. Uh, but one time we have 5,000 room in our dormitory separately. 5,000 room. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, and the people are, are separately for almost, almost two weeks. And we give them free accommodation, uh, free food. And we, we support them and make sure you no know, two weeks. They are locked down at the dormitory, no problem. Then we bring them back, bring them back to work. So today uh, in ZPMC, you know, uh, I think it's already uh, end of February, early March. We already back, already back to work. And the, the, the government is also very happy. And also uh, the local government support us for uh, reduce the electricity support for, support for medical and 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 also do many necessary things. Uh, start from March, early March. Every day we give one people the mask because the mask. If the, the if if they take workers they wear the mask is very important, and we also. Everybody uh, have a, a separate uh, during the during the lunch and dinner. We separate the food too, and uh, keep the social distinction. So until today, in our Changshing Island base and the different manufacturing base, uh, the people are very well. We have a, no one get a virus, and and. Uh, everything goes well so um i think you know um, the activity taken by zpmc is okay and we are keep working like that and we also do uh, uh during uh during the people working in the office 
and we, we and we when they go in, in the headquarter when the people go into office we make only four people take the elevator so a series of activity we taken now going well uh, zpmc is actively think about impact development of the emergency technology on terminal automation and the team uh, and intelligence uh, because uh, uh, Chinese government think about how to encourage the economic. So the government uh, raised new infrastructure, infrastructure uh, uh, of, uh, as the strategy. And we will build intelligent transportation and intelligent terminal. So we prepare very much on the new uh, uh, solution for the automation terminal. Our uh, uh, automation steel carrier already supply and deliver in Stockholm HPH terminal. And now this uh, steel carrier running well, so we will supply more and more uh, automation steel carrier. And if you get time, we are open and want to, want, you can visit our manufacturing base for solar carrier. And we think about the future uh, change of the terminal, uh, especially on automation. First is the artificial and intelligence big data analysis, analyze, will put more and more into the automation terminal. The second, the robot-human collaboration generated by unmanned machinery and intelligent device will let it change. The, uh, will let it change in the terminal. The third is 5G communication, and we are work with China Telecom and some other company about 5G um, technology. I think you know 5G technology is very much useful for automation terminal and our client is much more welcome. The fourth is how to do the virtual reality and other immersive experience technology. And the fifth is smart port big data and it is very important. Uh, so uh, our current issue is mainly the many work is required in the loading and unloading the, the trains from the ship, the final commission on site and the service maintenance. So during this time, uh, um, uh, the problem for ZPMC is some of our people, technician and engineer, we cannot go abroad. Especially we have several vessels went to Europe and um, India, and also South America, we, our engineer cannot go abroad. So we set up our professional team in China, China. in Shanghai. We remote control and we remote monitor the offloading. And the last week, we successfully unload the crane in India because our captain and our vessel crew they do more than 10 years experience on offloading. So remote monitoring problem for that. And because in our Changxi Island base, uh, our manufactured productivity and our mm, mm, resource all the back, uh, already all, 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 all back. So uh we 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 already 100% uh 100% uh, back to the normal in march february we only have uh one third now we are 100% already uh back to normal for the production but our customer and some of our um, 
third party cannot come to China. So we also use the remote monitor, remote in inspection. They are in um, uh, Europe, they are in Singapore, but we use the uh, high-tech camera. We check everything and also doing the commission uh, going well. So um, I believe, you know, uh, all of us, we can overcome the virus and, and the, we came back to normal and the ZPMC as a crane manufacturer, we will do as much as, as possible to support our customer and our uh, suppliers. And some people is asking me about during the virus, uh, uh, during the virus time, also during, after this special time, ZPMC is thinking about use more and more Chinese made components or we will do, uh, do more um, manufacturing in China. We say, uh, we will do as before. Uh, we will try as much as possible to support our customer yeah. and our supplies. And I'm very happy, uh, Charles uh, Maurizio is my friend. He told me his factory uh, is in Italy, but, they are cable factory, keep working during the special time and working very well. I think, you know, uh, this is uh, also let us feel very happy. And I hope, you know, um, all of us and all of you, we can work as normal and we can back to normal. So uh, thank you very much. I think in China, you know, uh, very soon, because uh, we need to uh, encourage our economy. So we will have more and more infrastructure project coming. And uh, many terminals in the north and in the south, they will, they want to modify into automation. And uh, uh, some terminal, they want to build new, and some terminal are there traditional, but they want modified to fully automation. Not only SDS, but also uh, ASC and also the truck. Uh, they want build existing conventional terminal to uh, 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 automation terminal. And the uh, government will support for that. And also the road also will be road and transportation will put more and more resource for the intelligence. So uh, Otto and uh, uh, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, if you have some question, I willing to uh, answer, thank you. Okay, but uh, thank you very much, Fred. Thank you for your, uh, I, I would say, uh, speech and introduction. Uh, I have a lot already, a lot of questions we received, so I'm going to give the word to Anna. Uh, thanks for this, uh, I would say, impressive and a lot of positiveness. This is what we need in this moment. So I'm going to give to, uh, the word to Anna Gatti. And um, afterwards, we, have, uh, we are coming back to questions. Don't, uh, don't leave, please, Fred, because I have a lot of questions for you here. That they are, Everybody is very impressed about you, what you are doing in China. And we'd like to know a little bit more how we, some, some advices from your side. So let's go okay. uh, right now. Um, let's go right now to the, our uh, third speaker. Um, our panelist is Anna Gatti. Uh, um, Anna holds a PhD in business administration. She lives in between Florence and San Francisco, uh, where she uh, co-founded a startup in artificial intelligence uh, applied to big data. She's a veteran in the tech industry with years of experience in digital businesses and online monetization in Silicon Valley. Anna served as independent board director for large uh, banks uh, like Intesa, San Paolo, other companies like Last Minute Group, uh, Rai, Away, uh, Fiera di Milano, Waking Bank, and also uh, serves as advisor for early stage startups. So, Anna, please give us a little bit your views on, um, I would say, um, uh, what, uh, what the supply chain, including ports, uh, might change after the, this COVID-19 is over and the role of the IT. Please, Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you for inviting me. And uh, it is uh, 
um, is actually extremely inspiring uh, to hear what uh, uh, China and ZPMC are already doing uh, to effectively um, exiting the crisis. Uh, as you know, Italy has entered phase two four, so we are back uh, in production and the surprises that are from the previous panelist um, are indeed, uh, uh, have indeed inspired what, uh, what we are doing uh, in Italy as well. But, you know, going back uh, um, to what the previous panelist uh, has mentioned, um, I was extremely impressed uh, by his reference uh, uh, multiple times uh, to the fact uh, that uh, his company is uh, looking at uh, intelligence computation and uh, big data to basically have a leverage, uh, an additional leverage uh, to cope with the crisis. Why I'm impressed? Because while I totally share uh, the sentiment uh, that uh, our previous, our first panelist expressed, meaning that uh, we cannot make uh, any robust prediction simply because uh, this is uh, a very unique uh, crisis and we don't have en enough data to predict uh, which of the scenario will prevail. Uh, we have already, despite that, we have already learned one thing that data are really critical. And, uh, um, and so, you know, the key, the buzzword across uh, any industry today is what's the best way to leverage data, big data and artificial intelligence uh, to basically um, compute uh, those data that we have available. And uh, again, while we don't have uh, an answer about which kind of changes uh, the supply chain will, uh, will see, um, going back to the way you, Otonel, has defined the supply chain, that it's a network, I think that one of uh, the evidence that came uh, to our attention with this crisis uh, has been that uh, it's a network, but not uh, in the in the meaning of software engineer consider that because it's extremely interdependent and uh, the way it's designed doesn't have a lot uh, of redundancy to assure resilience uh, and uh, uh, to assure um, you know backup uh, in case of big crisis so you know going back to what uh, our first panelist mentioned about the fact that there are ongoing discussion on um, if uh, which kind of globalization we will have in the future um, i think uh, and this is of course my very personal opinion i'm not presenting the opinion of any of the company i'm on the board my personal opinion is uh, that uh, um, the the way we will rethink the supply chain will in, in a way uh, be very driven by the concept of redundancy and resilience uh, that we currently see when we design network, communication network, software networks. And that will take a few years and it will imply a combination of more uh, local nodes uh, with uh, the main, if you want, connector between nodes uh, uh, to use the network uh, uh, theory definition um, that will remain uh, uh, long goal or global. So, uh, you know, if, uh, if uh, uh, I have to pick uh, the three, if you want, key points uh, in terms of uh, digital and artificial intelligence that this uh, crisis uh, has brought to the attention of the supply chain, uh, I would say that the first one is uh, digital collaboration. Each of you have used the word collaboration many times, and uh, uh, it, is, it is certainly critical. It is even more critical when it comes to digital collaboration. That means uh, basically sh sharing, collecting, and sharing data uh, almost real time. The second point is in fact the real time network visibility. If we have good data, we are able to have uh, uh, good 
visibility in real time of our supply chain in all the industry. And, uh, and this leads us uh, to be able to generate uh, rapid insights, which is something that we are still struggling. And, uh, and we saw that also in the health industry with this crisis, like it was, uh, it was not easy at the beginning to share the data between countries to understand uh, uh, what was going on in different parts of the, of the geographical area. And once that was done, we saw an improvement in how to cope with the crisis. So, um, you know, again, while I, I, I don't have uh, the crystal ball uh, to share uh, how exactly the supply chain will change, I can see that this is, despite triggered by a crisis, it's an exceptional opportunity for the, for the port industry and the supply chain to really rethink uh, um, how to look at it. And let me, let me elaborate a little bit on this concept. Um, most of the time when traditional industry um, look at the so-called digital transformation, in reality, they don't really look at a transformation. They look at the di digitalization of what they have. Why that? Because what they have works. <laughs> and so they just want to try to digitalize what they have. Doing that most of the time does not translate uh, in uh, um, cost-effective decisions. Um, instead of having cost reduction, sometimes we see cost uh, increase. Instead of having gain of productivity, we see loss of productivity. And so we go back to our consultant and we say, hey, guy, you told us that uh, digitalization will bring us 30% uh, increase in productivity. I actually lost 10%. And that's it because we use the old logics apply to the new tool. Now, um, the good news and the bad news of this uh, COVID-19 is that it's forcing us to look at uh, the supply chain in a completely brand new way. And doing that, we can rethink uh, the concept of uh, automation, digitalization, and intelligence data. So I'm actually, um, I'm actually quite positive that uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can go out stronger than uh, how we entered from this crisis. It will take some time, so it will take a lot of effort, but I'm positive. Okay, so um, thank you very much, Anna. So uh, we have an, another view. Uh, which uh, I think is very important to see you are not in the in the poor business so I think also I have some questions for you which are coming now from the from our uh, audience so um, let's go a little bit to questions now and I'm um, I have a question for uh, so thank you uh, Anna uh, please stay with us um, we have a, a question for Lamia this is <coughs> regarding the <coughs> um, the expectations the ports and terminals they have from manufacturers so what would be what are the lessons we learned from this crisis and what do, you, what do you think the ports are expecting from us manufacturers in the port industry? Uh, we can't hear you, Anna. You need to uh, unmute. Uh, so, okay, I, perfect. I, yeah, thank you, Otonel. I, I think that I cannot at this stage of course, uh, speak on behalf of my, my members on what they expect, their, what their, their expectations are. But I would like to um, probably um, uh, elaborate a bit more on, on what I said regarding the, the questions that are at this moment uh, uh, very much discussed uh, within our industry and beyond. Um, Re with respect, for instance, to digitalization, um, this is something that is, uh, this crisis has shown that the companies which have been the most resilient have been the ones who have already a level of digitization and digitalization, which is quite advanced. Uh, and what I mean is not only um, digitizing their documents, uh, but also digitalizing which and connecting with other segments of the of the logistic chain. 
Uh, and we saw it uh, even with those who actually never stopped working because we all use the digital tools. And I think the webinar today is, a, is, is clearly a sign that we are more than ever uh, connected thanks to those tools and instruments. Uh, but this was also valid for operational matters. And, and I think that the port sector, as many other sectors, have been also resilient because some companies are connected uh, to other party, other parties of the chain. So for me, the future, if I have to, uh, to um, a bit uh, um, say a few things on, on how we, we see things, digitalization will remain high on the agenda much higher than probably other topics uh, which require more heavy investment. Uh, I'm not saying that digitalization is not, uh, I would say, a, an important investment and requires a lot of resources. But what I mean is, is that for sure, uh, the, the, the effort to digitalize and better connect and improve the port community systems into uh, platforms of real exchange of data well beyond the port community, for instance, will be something that will remain on the table. And if I connect it to what we are doing at European level, and which, with respect to data sharing, for instance, because we're very often we say, why, why are the, the different parties of the chain not, not exchanging data? Is it true that all data is actually sensitive? Uh, so this is something that, that has been around for a while, and our sector is probably quite late compared to others in sharing data, but at the same time, we are raising with other, I would say, important stakeholders, the issue of data ownership and governance, because it's important to define the rules. I mean, data is not something that is a neutral leader. And we, we saw it, and I think the crisis which we went through at uh, this uh, recently shows that uh, our logistics chains, uh, the knowledge about the flows is something that is strategic and important. And therefore, sharing data about uh, some, I would say, uh, crucial uh, um, information is not, is not something that is, we can, I would say, uh, deal with uh, without being fully aware of what it represents in, in terms of, uh, of assets huh, as such. So um, I agree that digitalization is something important. It's definitely on the agenda of my industry. And this, we have a task force within Fieport. We have a, a committee dealing with it all the time. We are uh, at this moment very much also engaged with two commissioners uh, at the competition and the internal market one regarding data governance and data sharing, the rules that should apply, because of course there's the whole debate on the digital big providers uh, and the role that they might have on that. So I agree that ideally we should all go for that uh, very quickly, but at the same time I think that it's important to define some rules. And once the rules are known, I'm sure that this industry will also, will also definitely engage into that. But, but I think that um, this is something that will be a priority in the coming months because of its role, even during the crisis. Thank you very much, uh, Lamia. Um, I, have, um, I have a question here. Um, I'm coming back also because I have some other questions for you regarding automation and electrification. Uh, something for Fred here. Um, first of all, very impressive what, what you are doing in China. I mean, the people there, listen and they say they are amazed we do not know we didn't have the occasion maybe to speak live with someone who is in china is telling how the how he restarted the company of thirty-five thousand people that's very impressive so um also these buses you mentioned uh, i mean it's it's really amazing and giving five thousand rooms and free food and quarantine that's something wow um a question to you now um now we are working in a very uh, globalized supply chain um, and we are speaking specifically in Europe and uh, also in the uh, United States about local manufacturing, bringing back production. As I say, China today is almost one third of the world's industrial production. It's enormous. If you take France, France is only 2% or Italy is more or less 2%. So it's nothing. And everybody is speaking about that. What do you think that 
this this pandemic is going to change so it means that the people they are thinking to make more to delocalize from china and to bring uh, more um, i would say um, uh, industrial product uh, production in, in towards europe to americas what what is your view on that this is i have some questions here from from some of our uh, um, say participants is it going to be a change? What do you see? Not immediately in the future. More, more. Uh, I would say regionalization or localization in, in, of some factories. Well, what, what is, what is your view here? Uh, because uh, this is a little bit political, but uh, uh, I, I, I don't politics here. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think so. I don't think so, because uh, in Shanghai uh, is also my hometown, uh, Tosla. They already back to they are they, they set up a com uh, company and the factory in Shanghai and uh, working very well. Uh, we have uh, many many Chinese made Chinese made uh, uh, green energy vehicle factory, but the government very much support Tesla uh, they are from USA to support them, and I think. The business for Tesla this uh, this year next year will be very quick. Quick, uh, uh, will be very good. Ten months they set uh, they they finished building all the factory everything ready, and as a crane manufacturer you now we also think about uh, after this pandemic pandemic we will use many domestic made components, but we think we cannot uh, because every customer. They have their hobby. They like some customer like Boban break, and some customer like another brand or uh, Charles Cable. So it is very important for ZPMC. You know, we need to use different kinds of brand components. And uh, the good for us is uh, we built in a certain place in the island. And during this special time, we lock down our manufacturing base. Our worker, they said, stay at stay in the dorm and work. They only they not go outside, so they are very safe. And every day we check the temperature two times for them, and it seems no problem, very 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 well. And the, some components they are came from Europe and from um, US a little bit late. But it's no problem. We talk with customer; they are all understand. So now we talk with our supplier, you know, and uh, also our some partner, uh, special supplier. They will think about train more and more. They are local engineer, and they will think about put more stock in China, and they will they will uh, 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 think about build some factory in China, especially uh, 2020 and 2021. In China, the, the, uh, uh, the port will have also have a special automation port will have a big development. I think many ports, even Chinese port, they think about use more and more overseas components because they have a relation. Uh, they have a uh, very good business, and uh, also uh, when we build a crane uh, uh, export to different country, they have their choice. So I think for ZPMC side, I don't think will be big change, and the, we our manufacturing procedure is different than our competitor. Uh, they use the client clients. Uh, site to do assembly, but we do everything in our manufacturing base and ship by our vessel. So it's different. We will continue uh, work as the before and work with our uh, supplies and work more. Uh, we will work more with uh, our um, um, friends overseas. So I think. Uh, we're not, especially uh, after virus, uh, our, after this pandemic period in China, we, we will have a big 
support and step on the construction. So many, many business need many, many people, many, many companies to involve. So I think, you know, um, we will keep the same, but we will have more understanding. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you very much. Thank you for uh, your, uh, uh, I would say, the, the news you are giving us are, I would say, there are messages which are very important. So regarding suppliers, because a lot of them are worried what is going to happen. Is China still going to buy from us, not specifically your company? And this is, this is I think, uh, it's important to hear a, a view from uh, a company. It's not the view of all of China, but it's a view, and I think we appreciate that. Uh, I have a I have a question here for um, for Anna. Um, now we are speaking about money. We are uh, we sell a lot of uh, a lot of trillions coming from uh, U.S. Uh, EU, EU uh, China. Everybody is supporting this. Uh, the governments are supporting the economies. Um, do you think that this is going to restart some big infrastructure? Uh, is is this money enough? That's the first question for restarting a little bit some some um, some personal views here um if we should yeah. start as we did in the last crisis uh, you know big infrastructures highway ports and, and others what, what what is your view here uh so you know um first of all thank you for the question um I do agree that uh, uh, the different uh, states and government uh, has uh, pledged uh, um, big, uh, big ticket uh, to support uh, the, the, the COVID-19 uh, post-crisis or exit uh, from the crisis. And, and um, the typical, uh, if you want, neutral answer would be you know, the amount is fair, it depends uh, how uh, then the different country will use it. Um, the, what we see, the first sin signals uh, that uh, we are seeing is uh, that uh, uh, big infrastructure projects uh, are uh, between the priorities uh, across the different countries. Um, so, you know, it, it seems there are signals uh, that uh, uh, those projects uh, will, uh, will continue and as uh, um, Fred said also um, in China, you know, is expected to see um, infrastructure investment that's in Europe as well uh, for what we see from now. Um, would that be sufficient? Uh, this, this, the amount of money is uh, um, it seems a, a good uh, a good um, jump starter. Um, you know, it's going to be a process. So certainly, um, we we need to keep monitoring how the different countries are are moving, and and uh, of course, you know, all the the, um, the communication and the discussion that uh, are happening now. Um, at, uh, at the European level uh, as well uh, as the outside Europe uh, are going to determine uh, um, how we will use then uh, in reality those money. But you know the short answer is uh, if we if uh, each uh, country makes good use uh, of funds, uh, um, that uh, the amount that has been allocated uh, is a uh, is a good uh, jump start. It seems like a good jump start. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Anna. Um, I have a question for Lamia here regarding the uh, the trends we had until now uh, regarding automation, electrification, sustainable sustainable energies in the ports. And do you think that they are going to the trends? These trends are going to go on, specific automation, uh, clean energies, and so on. Post COVID. Um, you need to unmute. Well, thank you, Otonel. Um, I think that this is a, a, a very um, important question. And uh, as far as uh, the climate related topics are concerned and the greening, I would say in general, I don't expect it to disappear uh, because this is a heavy, I would say, trend. And we have a lot of discussions within uh, different, I would say, uh, countries regarding the effect, for instance, of the, the decrease of, uh, of uh, air pollution uh, due to, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the stop of, of, uh, of uh, airline um, uh, links and, 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 uh, and flights. 
I'm not saying that that people will uh, decide will will go all for a flight uh, bashing everywhere, but I think that this trend uh, will remain within societies. The question is the speed at which new environmental regulation will be adopted. It means that are we going to keep the calendar as it was, uh, and for the EU, for instance, the European Green Deal was proposed at the beginning of this year. We were, and we are supposed to have some proposals quite soon, but uh, we have, we, we see that there is also a discussion now, a connection between the recovery plan uh, and, and of course the, um, the the status of the discussions regarding the European Green Deal. Uh, there are some uh, obviously some some parties which are very in favor of the European Green Recovery Plan, which means that if we go for uh, massive investments uh, or a Marshall Plan between inverted commas uh, to relaunch uh, activities and and to recover from the crisis, it will have to be. Uh, systematically invested in two green alternative, uh, uh, I would say, energies, technologies, um, whatever uh, green projects. Um, so for me, this will remain, and the greening, of course, of the maritime industry is going to remain because uh, it is something that is uh, actually uh, important for the population, the neighboring ones or ports, but well beyond. So I don't expect it to disappear. Now coming to other questions with respect to automation and, and other, I would say, um, uh, uh, developments in the port industry, this will uh, depend, I would say, on, on, of course, other parties of the chain. Because let's not forget that we are a segment and there, there is an upstream and downstream segment uh, and therefore, uh, all decisions that will, uh, will of course, be taken by the port industry will echo somehow uh, other investments that will be made uh, upstream and downstream. When I talk about, um, for instance, on the interland side, it will all also depend on how uh, the other parties of the chain will organize themselves. Will we, do we, are we going to see more uh, rail, uh, for instance, projects emerging? more uh, um, more i would say platooning more uh, uh, electricity uh, based uh, i would say solutions uh, on, on that side and on the shipping side it will also depend as i mentioned earlier whether we will this trend of gigantism will will carry on or whether we will go for other types of of, of ships which range uh, more around 9000 to 14000 tu and which would mean that the investment in ports will also be affected because then we will probably not go for expansions or but a rather different types of projects so i would say the, the type the discussion is ongoing uh, the trend will probably not disappear for what relates to public policy for instance for environmental uh, and of course employment let us for let, let us not forget that uh, the 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 money that is going to be poured is also there to employment. Huh? Uh, this is something very important, otherwise we will have big social crisis everywhere. And therefore, the, the, uh, one of the priorities will be also to, to invest in, I would say, projects that will allow also to employ uh, a number of, uh, uh, to avoid, I would say, layoffs and, and, uh, and the reduction of, of personnel. So you mean that, for example, sorry to, to interrupt you, the, the automation, is it going to go on or we are going to go more to manual operation? I'm, I'm not saying, on this, I, I, again, I mean, this is, this is something I cannot speak on behalf of my members, but what I, what I of course, uh, uh, feel uh, and is that uh, like we have seen some orders of vessels on hold, uh, for instance, uh, you have seen that orders have been frozen, huh? For a number of big container lines, I expect also some, of course, um, terminals worldwide to reflect upon the decisions in that area because this is a, an important investment, and of course, the, the return on investment for a fully automated terminal is there if you have the volumes. At this moment, as you know, there is a significant drop in volumes, 
Whether it will last or not, probably not, because we hope that we will have, of course, uh, a return to a normal situation at the end of this year, hopefully, and beginning of next year at, uh, at, at the, I would say, the most pessimistic uh, scenario. But at the same time, we are, of course, the, 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 the sector is very much uh, listening to the, to the, I would say, the ways <laughs> to what is happening on the other side on, of, of, of the docks. Huh? So it will all depend on, of course, the type of customers we will have. Okay, <clears throat> so thank you very much, Lamia, very clear. So I have a, a question for Fred here. Um, you were telling us about the new way of working and uh, social distancing. I'm asking you this question because uh, some of our auditors, they are, uh, they are opening their factories now, or they were open, uh, but there are new rules in the fact that European and the US factories. So uh, social distancing uh, is one of them, uh, double shift, uh, um so do you think that this is from your experience this is not affecting the efficiency uh of course no, of course it, it will in the beginning it will affect the efficiency mm, but if you control well if you organize and uh, and it will also be okay like the mm -hmm. meeting usually we face-to-face -face meeting but uh, during the special time, uh, we used the uh, WeChat meeting, uh -huh. and we also <laughs> used the uh, QQ tension tension the meeting, the same as uh, your Zoom meeting. And because our company is big, so one time we can have uh, several hundred people on the line. Very quickly, we can give the order, and also um, some people work at home. Some people, I'm, I mean, in the in, in the office. Um, some people work in the office. But some people work at home. They are technical people. They can make the drawing. They can do something at home. So, also they save the time uh, and doing well. Uh, for the for the for the lunch, usually in Chinese company they supply the lunch. We will supply lunch, and we separate. And we prepare the lunch for every people. Usually, one time in the headquarter in uh, in Shanghai, uh, we, we we one time we'll prepare three thousand five hundred uh, uh, lunch. We prepare the lunch box so very quickly everybody can get the lunch and they finish. Um, uh, they eat and and also um, going well. Uh, the only problem is we cannot go abroad at the moment, but for some. Some project and some country, we can get a special permit like USA and um, Europe. Or some country they give a special permit. So our engineer, uh, our very key person, they can also fly to overseas to finish the job. And we also use many new way to do the remote monitoring. Uh, just just I mentioned we remote loading train. And very successful because these people, uh, this vessel crew, they understand how to do. But we put many engineer in Shanghai and give them idea and they use the high tech camera, uh, and and it seems going well. So uh, during this special time, we use a special way, and uh, um, finally in the March. And in April, especially in our manufacturing base, we are back to normal. Because our manufacturing base, you know, is different than um, uh, other bodies' manufacturing base. We have a dome in the factory. And the, the Changshin Island base, our dome can have a uh, maximum, we can have 20,000 people live in the Changing Island base together, and we we, we, we they have a, 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 a they can stay in the factory and they can work in the factory. They can lock down the factory factory. So so it seems you know um, not so many affecting, but some other company probably different because if they go back home, uh, if they go somewhere else, they they. They mix the talk with some people else, 
uh, and it, it probably would have some, they will have some issue. But in Chashing Island base, and our Nanjing base is a special. So um, for us, you know, we control well, and all, also our mm, employees, our workers, they cooperate. Uh, and uh, uh, it seems no problem, and uh, we back no more. So uh, I think, you know, uh, if we well organized, if uh, we, we, we cooperate each other, uh, something is we can control. Mm. And this is also this is also including, for example, a service. You say that you are doing remotely with high definition cameras, maintenance, these kind of things. You can monitor that in this moment because it's difficult to travel uh, outside China. This is something I would say in the next months uh, is going to be handled like that. This is what I am understanding. Uh, for the service, uh, usually, you know, uh, we have our site office uh, because in many, many areas, uh, we have a people local. So they're doing service, uh, they're doing the um, job um, to hire the local um, subcontract and they use the local employees and they are, they are going well. They're together with like, our customer. And uh, we also are developing some remote um, support uh, technologies uh, and also um, uh, remote uh, control uh, support uh, on the maintenance and on the uh, solution of the special problem. We are also doing that uh, because we think in the future probably remote inspection, remote monitoring and uh, uh, remote control is the way to do the job. And uh, th this can less the traveling, but safety is very much important. Mm. For, for the understand, but this is bringing us also to a question to, to Anna, who is a artificial intelligence uh, expert. And uh, what new behaviors, uh, this disruptive, some disruptive innovation we see Anna in uh, a little bit, in, not in the port industry, maybe this is not your uh, expertise, uh, but in general in the industry. I give an example, you know, uh, years ago, Alibaba during the pandemic of SARS became one of the number one companies in the, the, in the world uh, because they changed their strategy. What disruptive innovations do, do you see like that? I know big data, we discuss some big, big data. I know this, we don't have the, the crystal ball, but yeah. you are <laughs> next, uh, just uh, as a brainstorming. No, that's a, that's a very interesting question. And uh, as a fact, uh, um, we had a lot of meeting between, uh, um, you know, I, I, I'm also doing angel investments uh, in Silicon Valley. So we had a lot of meeting with other uh, professional venture capitalists in terms of uh, um, what would be the next big, big trends. And, uh, uh, you know, while again, uh, um, a lot will depend by how we get out from this crisis and which uh, scenario will prevail. Um, there are some, uh, um, if you want, innovation trends uh, that will, uh, will apply uh, no matter the scenario that we will see. Um, certainly, there, um, the remote collaboration that uh, Fred just mentioned uh, is going to be uh, a, a growing area, and uh, and uh, these uh, forced, uh, uh, you know, pandemic forced uh, digitalization that we have experienced in the last months uh, also allow to see some flows. That uh, are uh, in in the current way of uh, working. Uh, clearly, we as a as a global community have done uh, um, some great uh, improvements uh, instead of remote collaboration. However, during this crisis, we realize that we were not exactly ready for a real um, remote collaboration. So. Uh, in that department, uh, there will be um, increased investments uh, uh, from uh, venture capitalists. Um, there will be increasing investments uh, in, uh, um, in data analytics. And, uh, you know, not in the core technology of data analytics. That has been there for a while, but uh, in the service attached to data analytics. 
so that it can become uh, uh, easier uh, to for, for free uh, by consumer. Um, there will be probably um, wearable uh, uh, health uh, related uh, devices uh, that will see uh, an increase uh, of adoption and uh, um, and so those are uh, if you want a key area more in uh, in the supply chain department uh, um, again you know go back to what i said before um there uh, the, the, there is uh, a business opportunity and so an investment investment opportunity uh, that is uh, in on the radar screen right now which is uh, uh, basically how to provide uh, if you want uh, more operating system of uh, uh, the supply chain uh, you know um, our uh, speaker were mentioning the fact that uh, uh, port industry investments will depend by what we see downstream and upstream because that is uh, is just a piece and that is one of the realization that we don't have yet enough uh, um, integration system deployed across the entire supply chain and so that there is uh, uh, an opportunity to I'm not to invest uh, um, you know I'm not sure it will be disrupted because we have already seen a um, company like uh, Flexport that was funded in 2014, this now a multi-billion billion startup uh, to invest in that system. So, um, but, you know, uh, I think that uh, we will see more investments uh, from, from that department. In terms of final users, so consumers, um, I think that uh, people will want to know more uh, from where things are coming. You know, they want to know more, uh, you know, uh, this piece of meat or this, uh, you know, clothes, where is it coming exactly? And this is a trend that already started uh, in the past years, uh, um, but it didn't really take off uh, uh, as it was expected. Uh, and I think that once we are out from the acute crisis, uh, I think that the con final consumers, uh, uh, you know, the individual user will ask more and more about that uh, tra traceability and really know from where things are coming from. So again, we go back to the core concept. Uh, you know, if you want to bring on one concept, I think that the one concept is uh, data 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 things uh, you know even in the in the physical world that uh, there will be an increase uh, of uh, traceability of data and uh, ability to analyze those in real time okay so thank you anna i have a last question also for lamia um, this is uh, regarding the consolidation in the maritime sector shipping lines the terminal operators i'm not going to give names because we discussed about you know, this, uh, uh, this uh, supports from the governments, of course, they are not for everyone. So do you see any, any change in the future that um, um, more consolidation and integration of, let's say, shipping line, uh, terminal operator, inland transportation as a trend? Well, I, 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 it's, a, it's a bit, um, I would say, a tricky question because, uh, again, I, I cannot speak on behalf of my, my sector, but uh, what we, we already see is that, of course, there is a consolidation, at least on the, the shipping side. We, we know uh, for, for the container business, for instance, the number of, uh, of players has been shrinking. And of course, on the terminal side, you have also global, some global actors, more regional and, of course, local ones. We, will not, we don't really know what will happen, of course, uh, not yet. But what is for sure uh, uh, is, is, um, is that this crisis will reshuffle the landscape somehow, in a way or another. Um, and, and one, I would say, among the questions we have is that, of course, whether some important players will be able to survive with, with, without any kind of public intervention. Uh, because some of them, if I take the, 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 on, the, on our customer side, uh, for instance, in the container business again, 
we have overcapacity, chronic overcapacity for a while, uh, and in spite of the withdrawal of, uh, of important capacities these last weeks, of course, the, the question is still there on whether they will be able to survive with freight rates which are not so low, but at the same time, uh, we, we don't see, I would say, um, the situation back again very quickly up to the point that they will be able to survive with it without any kind of uh, recapitalization mechanism. So um, there will be changes, most probably uh, in the landscape. This is, this is for sure. It will impact, of course, also the other sectors and of course the port sector most probably. Uh, but I would like also to, to say that um, one of the important lessons that, that my sector is learning and, and I see it happening already uh, in all what is around the port industry is that um, data mining and business intelligence are going to be very important uh, tools to also operate transformation. Uh, which means that this is going to be a crucial element because we need to, of course, uh, know a, mo a bit more what happened, why it happened, and how if we need to prepare for the future, be it consolidation or any other, I would say, transformation that may happen, uh, those who will be able to exploit data to understand what happened within the supply chains, how things went well, how they went wrong, and of course have more business intelligence regarding of course not only competition and competitors but also beyond I mean, uh, the, the sector itself are the ones who are going to be in a good position to uh, to transform and maybe last point the big also um, I would say, uh, interest will will also be uh, the consumer the consumer's behavior because i agree uh, we have been hearing for years many experts talking about commoditization of maritime transport and of course the the evolution that we might see uh, uh, so that it becomes a commodity like uh, like it was uh, uh, any kind of commodity and of course this crisis maybe also recalls that um, the consumers remain the kings in the sense that the way they order the way they behave is going also to impact us all together, uh, independently, but also collectively. Okay, uh, thank you, Lamia. I have a um, last question for Fred. Basically, there are two. Um, one, uh, Fred, is um, upon your experience now in the in the last three months, I'm speaking, or since the beginning of, uh, let's say, February, January. Um, what advice would you give to an industrial, from the industrial point of view, to a to a to a supplier located outside China? Uh, now they cannot come to visit you. What what advices would you give to a supplier, to to you, for example? Um, to what what would be this an advice? Just like that. Okay, uh, I think you know. Um, uh, this year and the next year, I believe you know China will have more opportunity, especially in the terminal construction uh, and also um, more equipment. Uh, so for the supply, I think uh, you need to keep contact with the Chinese port and uh, also with the PMC. You know. Uh, because at the moment uh, you cannot come to China, but you can use more local engineer and the local people. And uh, I, I think ABB, Siemens, and also some like Bubenders, uh, company like Bubend, they they have a they have their local people in China, and they can commissioning. And they can do the work, no problem. And also, I mentioned in my speaking uh, before, we need put some storage, more storage. And if you know uh, we have a cooperate with some Chinese company or set up a company in China or Asia, it will, it will, I think, more uh, good for the business. Especially 
after um, virus or after June, I think Chinese government will support more and more for the overseas supply uh, because we need uh, booming up the economic. We need more uh, contact with the overseas. So I think will be the chance. And uh, uh, I hope my friend and our partner, our supplies. Now I think we didn't hear your last words, huh, Fred. Can you hear us? Hello? 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 No, no, you are no, back. No, you are no, back. No, you are okay, back. Okay, okay. Okay. I think the last, I the last, think, last, go ahead. Yeah, I think in, uh, it will be a chance for our supply and our partner. So we need to have more contact, understand the policy, understand some space situation. I think business is waiting for us. Okay, so um, uh, Fred, the last one is for you. It's a simple question. When do you think we can come to visit you in China? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes. When, when do you think we can come to China to visit you? Uh, I, I will give you the information. Uh, this land in Shanghai will open the next week. So this is the first Disneyland open in the world. So I think China very soon will be open. Also in, in the, uh, I think in the end of May, uh, in the end of May, we will have a national meeting. So I believe in after June, after June, China will be open, but it is it, 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 uh, it, it, from my thinking. After June, of course, it's uh, a personal will be yeah. open, and I think you know uh, um, we can meet each other. It's very important, you know. First, uh, we need to go abroad, see you, and uh, at the moment we cannot get a visa. Also, <laughs> so I think very soon we can meet each other. And um, my thinking, you know, uh, because the, this land is open, so very soon, you know, China will be open. Thank you. So, <clears throat> thank you very much, Fred. Um, and um, I would like to make a, a, a short conclusion on what we discussed today. So, uh, we are looking to come to China, and not only to China, elsewhere also, in, in, uh, in Paris, uh, for La Mia is, or in Italy, or in San Francisco, uh, for, uh, for Anna. Um, so, um, <clears throat> I think this, uh, we discussed a lot about opportunities and uh, I think this pandemic is creating a lot of opportunities and um, opportunities are also coming from innovation. I think innovation is, is something, uh, it's an unprecedented time to innovate. And I would like to give again this, this I, I was mentioning a little bit earlier how Alibaba became a giant. It became a giant during the period of the self-quarantining during the SARS and epidemic, it was at this time. So this is, this is an example, because there are many other examples. Um, tendencies, as a summary on what we discussed today on, in the ports, uh, we might see a deeper international integration of the supply chain. Um, we didn't speak too much about retrofitting instead of new terminals and brownfield. This is another subject. Uh, uh, IT, internet, um, uh, I would say also uh, uh, digitalization, um, artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence technologies, no discussion that this is, this is the future. Um, service maintenance, uh, we have now uh, new ways of uh, making service uh, to our equipment. Um, electrification, from my understanding, from what our, our speaker said, this is going to uh, electrification and uh, and green uh, technologies are going to be also um, a part of the reducing carbon print also for the ports. Um, for the automation, uh, this is something uh, we also have to see, uh, depends on the type of ports. So these are the, let's say, as a summary um, on what we discussed today. I think uh, uh, I would like first of all to thanks to our speakers and also to, of course, our audience. 
uh, I am sure that this pandemic is um, is giving also a lot of uh, opportunities. Um, I'm very pleased that with the example um, China is giving us in reopening, when they reopened one month and a half ago, their economy is going to follow up also in the Western countries. And uh, I would say that uh, let's go back to work. Uh, to respect the rules, to respect the uh, social distancing and so on, and um, to have the possibility to meet face to face um, as soon as we can. So once again, thank you for participating um, to the speakers and to the audience. Thank you, Alamia. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Fred. And uh, let's uh, uh, keep, uh, let's say, strong and uh, move ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.